um, afternoon and I, I feel so honored to be on this lineup for this charity and I just wanted to echo what you were saying about um, being careful you know being sort of um, choosy about the charities that you work with and I'm very much the same I don't really work with many charities at all or many organizations and uh, I work with Hugs specifically because of the work that they do and I think um, I feel honored that I, I've been able to kind of be platform, uh, you know, b b perform on platforms with hugs. And um, yeah, I just urge all the sisters out there, um, you know, please, if, and I'm sure many of you, inshallah, have given anonymously and you just didn't put in the chat. And, you know, I always find those, uh, those um, kind of moments a bit awkward as well. And I think, inshallah, we can all be donating um, privately too. But yeah, I just wanted to um, reinforce that message. And you know, a couple of years ago, um, I, I think the first time I came across Hugs, I committed to one of the fundraisers and I was blown away that within, I think, 24 hours, um, we'd raised a thousand pounds. And obviously I have a slightly larger platform than a lot of people. But I think what was actually amazing was that it only was about 15, 16 people maybe that donated to raise that much. So, yeah, I just wanted to kind of say, um, yeah, uh, Allah will definitely provide. Um, so I'm going to do some poems, that's why I'm here, and um, I thought I would begin with a poem that is, um, I was inspired by the, all the poets um, earlier, all three women are absolutely phenomenal, inspiring, motivational, and I saw, you know, I felt so inspired myself, and so the first poem it wasn't going to perform and then I um, decided to just based on what I had heard earlier. This is a poem that I wrote during Ramadan um, and it was, you know, how we all experienced this strange Ramadan in lockdown and, um, you know, many of us were talking about the, the kind of contradiction in the, the sense that we got to introspect a lot more, but on the other hand, we missed out on things like Tarawi and, you know, joint iftars and communal kind of congregational moments of, of joy. Um, but I think for me anyway, it meant that I actually, maybe I hope was more aware actually of, of Allah and Allah's signs in everything around me. So this poem is just called Send Us a Sign. People say and have always said, send us a sign. Whilst sky hovers over us, whilst birds call out to us, whilst trees try to catch our attention, flourishing pink, green, orange, leafless, budding back to pink. Send us a sign, they say, whilst bees buzz at us, whilst day relays with night and night passes baton back to day, while something is heard, while something is smelt, while something is seen and held and felt, send us a sign. We are asking for water whilst drowning. We are asking for winds during a typhoon, for a torch whilst we are enveloped by the sun. We are extraordinary. Type at a keyboard for hours at a time, but pay no attention to our hands. Pay no attention to the fact we do not have to pay attention to our hands. Send us a sign. I look at a blade of grass one morning. In so many centuries, in so much dynamism and discovery, none of us could still make a single blade of grass. But we look up from our phones occasionally and say, well, if it's true, send us a sign. Thank you. Um, I just, yeah, I wanted to share that one because I think I was enjoying the poetry earlier, but also, yeah, I think when we're thinking about money and giving from our own wealth, it's um, important to remember that Allah has shown us already that, that, you know, there is a power beyond what we can imagine. And anything is possible because, yeah, look at the world around us. So this second poem um, is called um, Funeral of the Authentic Muslim Woman, and I hope it just makes sense. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to bury the memory of the one who never was who was written by others, made for others, and imposed on us. Today, let us stamp on her grave and the world she was made to hold us in. This is for the girls who cover their hair in the mornings and hang it loose by night. For the girls who keep it covered and those who never do. For the girls who were forced to, those forced not to, and those whose parents made no comment. For the ones who wear it loose, wear it barely, wear it groovy, the ones who don't know why they wear it, the ones who only sometimes do, the anti-capitalist male gaze resistors, the sisters who remind us hijab does not mean cloth, the taking it off on days after attack, the wearing it in bolder colours, the more than they're wearing it, the consumed by their wearing it, the worn by it, weary with it, worn and war-torn with it. 
dearly beloved. This is for the women who have been spat at for their faith, who have had people cross the road over their faith, who have had buses filled with hate over their faith, and the ones not noted as connected on the bus, the overlooked as ones, the asked if they're drinkers, and the drinkers. Those who do what the boys do and better, who denounce the boys, who are the boys, are better than the boys, who love the boys, are loved by the boys, wish they had the freedom of the boys, steal the freedom of their boys, stand for the freedom of the boys, don't vilify the boys, are vilified by the boys and still stand for their rights. Dearly beloved, this is for the girls who learnt their bodies meant shame before they learnt anything else. For the girls who shave off the shame and the girls who own it. For the secret relationships, the secret bodies, the embodied secrets, the silent babies, the never born, the accidentally had, the quickly covered up, the unjustly touched, the unafraid, the naked skin, the hypocritical kiss, the closed legs, the afraid to touch, and the never touched. Dearly beloved, this is for the married and the unmarried. The never married and the soon to be married, the unmarriageable, the second marriage, the anti-marriage, the marriage conversation, the wedding day dream, the one for our parents, the runaway bride, the marriage mistake and the happy divorce. Dearly beloved, this is for the sisters who wake consistently at dawn and those who never can. For the prayer sharing and the sleep defying, the sometimes waking and the sleepy. For the ones who stum stumble over the words, for the ones who stumble over the words, for the ones who know the entire book and the ones who struggle with it. This is for the ones who get five times a day, the ones who get five minutes a night, the ones whose five-year-old brings them back to the book, the five-pound translation, the translator, the educator, the student and the mum, dearly beloved. This is for the quiet girls and the ones who speak too much, the spoken for and the spoken over. The girls who speak for the girls, the girls who speak wrongly for the girls, who think they can speak for the girls, and the girls who don't speak, are sick of speaking, already spoke, spent too long woke, whose words are lost, whose voice is hoarse, and those still shouting. We were always here, and she never was. So when two hands offer us either victimhood or the total refusal of it, may we find comfort in our own hands. May we find comfort in the space between our hands where cameras never flash and stories do not weave themselves, for we were always here and she never was. So today, let us stamp on her grave and the world she was made to hold us in. So yeah, that poem came from a place, I suppose, of feeling like we're always told by others that we're not authentically Muslim, whether that's the politicians, you're not, you know, a Muslim woman looks like this, whether it's uh, the media, a Muslim woman looks like this, or whether it is us to one another, telling one another what a Muslim woman looks like, whether it's the brothers, whether it's the sisters. Um, and I think Allah is so much more merciful than any of us. And I think we have to sometimes remember that what Allah counts as a Muslim woman is, is often not what we would count as a Muslim woman. And perhaps that's something for us to reflect on, the harshness of our own souls. Um, Oh yes, this poem, I can see somebody asking, yeah, this poem is in my collection called um, Post-Colonial Banter. No questions about the cover, <laughs> no you can. Um, yeah, so uh, the, the, all the poems that I'm reading, apart from that first one, are in that poem, uh, in that collection. Okay, this second, uh, second third poem is, um, is a poem that I wrote for a book. You may be familiar with the book. It's called The Virtue of Disobedience, and it's by Arsene Qureshi. And I really, really recommend if you, if you haven't read the book or you haven't come across it, it's an amazing book and it really is rooted in um, sort of, you know, how as Muslims we should really see Islam as a, um, a duty upon us to stand up for justice always. And obviously this is what Hugs does, but also standing up for justice where it's seen as the wrong thing to do, seen as the unfashionable thing to do. And Muslims have always done that. They've stood up for justice when it has been unfashionable, not normative, um, and even viewed as, you know, illegal. Um, and we have to remember that actually the only authority comes from Allah. So, you know, we cannot be bound by laws, laws that have in the past told us that slavery was legal, laws that have meant that, you know, <laughs> um, un inequality has been legal. Even currently now, we've seen the Black Lives Matter protests across the world, and we see that it is enshrined in law, it is enshrined in norms, that black people are dehumanized. As Muslims, we can't stand for that. Um, and we have to, you know, we actually have to divest from the racism within our own communities. So I wanted to read this poem, A Virtue of Disobedience. Again, I wrote it for that book. So do read the book if you like the poem. Bismillah. We are the disobedient. Look upon us and despair. For we outlast history, time and memory. We are always there. 
We are the unquenchable thirst for justice, the bodies that do not bend, tongues you cannot straitjacket and eyes that will not be turned blind. We are the step you trip on in the night, the nightmare you wake from but cannot recall, the lump under the rolling hill that reminds you what is buried there. We are the disobedient. We bear witness and we testify. We love despite the lie that we are not worthy. We hold despite being told we should hide. Yes, we are the disobedient who refuse to die. For bodies without eulogies will never remain in their graves. We are the ghosts of the unmourned and the spirit of the never grieved. We are the original traitors to the tireless tyrant. We are Muhammad Wasallam. we are Malcolm, we are Moses and Asata, we are Toussaint and Bashani, we are Rosa and Rabani, we are the disobedient. Truth speakers with tongues of fire, knowledge seekers who provoke your ire, mouths always moist from sincere prayer, we are hearts beating for the truth. Not like fluttering birds in cages, but like the earth in her final convulsions, like mountains when they scatter to dust, we dismantle, uproot, expose, we of the disobedient and we have come not to claim what is yours but what is and always was ours our humanity but no not claim for it was always with us and our announcement of that is the blasphemy you burn us for but there's a reason you mustn't play with fire because the flames are not bound by only your aims if you burn our bodies in the morning the fire will be licking your heels that night do you feel secure then when we are bound not by law but justice loyal not to pen mark on paper but truth we are unconquerable and unmanageable because you can take what you want if all you want is to take we are your greatest fear fearless loyal not even to life there is no bargain to be made then for disruption is our only security in a world which says security is ensured only through our oppression what basis has such authority to be obeyed no we are the disobedient who refuse to know our place, undivided, low and mighty. We are a we, a unity, a community, a principle above place. We are the disobedient. We declare the emperor naked and don't kneel before the queen. We smash the idols, confront the pharaoh, upend the fabric of the world. We will not sell our souls for hallowed halls. We cannot be unmoved. We are the disobedient. We overspill and overspeak. We are unboxed, unharnessed, unfathomable, unpalatable, uncompromising. Oh, Ozymandiases of the world, did you really think yourselves kings of kings? How quickly you forget. Nothing outlasts the fading of the day, but the light of truth itself. You may recognize the reference to Surah Al-Asr at the end there. Nothing outlasts the fading of the day, and by the fading of the day, well, Arthur. Um, okay, so uh, oh, I don't know how much time I have left. Yeah, I'm just going to do two more poems, inshallah. Um, and I, I will do one that's maybe a little bit sadder first, and then I'll do one that I think is a bit more hopeful second. Um, this this poem is very clear, um, and I think you know exactly who I'm talking about. This poem is called. A prayer for those who jeer at the death of a baby whose teenage mother you feel did not show enough remorse. May you never feel the weight of what makes you human stripped from your bones. May you never know malnutrition or untimely death. May you always be warm. May you never see enough war that a bodiless head does not disturb you. May you never be alone and vulnerable. May your children not be preyed on. May they never live in a place that tries to vomit them out. May they never lose hope. May safety cloak your shoulders when you stand to pray. May you pray. May you never know the heavy feeling of soil packed between your limbs whilst you're still alive. May you never be a test for the oppressors. May you never be unloved. May people never feel satisfied that the treatment you get is the treatment you deserve. May they give you a name when you die. May they remember you as human. May your death be mourned in fullness and not just a symbol in a bigger debate. May you feel joy like the denseness of the night. May it drown you like the Mediterranean Sea. May it hit you in waves when you least expect it, crash through your door like bulldozers, occupy your home, smatter through your windows, spray you like bullets with your name on them. May you make a home in it. May you choke on it, breathe it, live it, die it, and may no one ever think they have a right to remove you from it. Um, yeah, 
had a lot of feelings um, and still do that a teenage girl whose third baby died in a refugee camp is so despised by so many people. May Allah protect everybody who's in that position. Um, I want to end on this poem, which is a poem that I tried to write basically about my um, grandmother and my aunties and um, sort of, I guess, a generation of women who I, I, you know, completely stand on the shoulders of. And I think, you know, um, Sadia, you, you, you were very kind in your introduction to me, but I, I am absolutely doing nothing um, that I, but nothing that I do or say is possible because of me. It's possible, obviously, through the grace of Allah, but also because I stand on the shoulders of women, my grandmother, my mother in particular, but generations of women um, who have made it possible for somebody like me to then with such ease perform poems. Um, and I, and I honour that and I honour that they lived through poverty and I honour that they worked in textiles mills and I honour that they emigrated across the sea and I honour that there are ancestors that I will never know what they did or what hardship they suffered. Um, and I have only the utmost respect for them. So this is called A Story for Ourselves This Time. I do not know how to write us outside of bangles and anklets. Gold and pretty, but still a type of chain. I do not know how to write us outside of romance and tragedy, tears of joy or tears of grief, which for us too often are made the same. I do not know how to write us outside of long hair and long eyelashes, which apparently suit us better than long lives. I do not know how to write us outside of fear, yet whispers and elisions and repeated mistakes. I wonder if our mothers promised they would not do the same. I do not know how to write us outside of our mothers, how not to make reference to their spines and silences, how to do it as more than a prelude to my own. I do not know how to write us outside of men, their eyes, their grips, their words, their pleasure. I do not know how to see our bodies outside their hands, how to salvage our skin from their requirements, how to write us with hairy arms and upper lips, bushy eyebrows before they were fashionable, cracked heels, full bellies and laughing mouths, not just kissing lips. I want to know how to write us outside the kitchen. Too often we are made into jasmine, cinnamon and sugar, but we are onions garlic, ginger, roots, tough, essential, the basis of everything, indispensable. Too often we are made into the moon, a mere mimicry of another's light, but we are the sun, the blaze, the fiery depth, we are deadly and uncontainable. Take back your rivers, your stars, your flowers. We are the source, the light, the soil. I want to write us outside of beauty and myth, though. Outside secrecy, shame and marriage. Outside of song, outside of heartache, outside of staring eyes and lowered gaze. I want to write us, even if I do not know how to begin. Because at least that way will be a story for ourselves this time. And I hope that's the message that I can leave you on. May you all be stories for yourselves. We are stories for ourselves and we shouldn't spend our lives, waste our lives. Um, trying to disprove other people's stories about us. Um, Jazakallah khair for your time, for listening, and um, may Allah reward you all for, for your donations and your support of hugs and your time this afternoon. And may he reward all the organizers, Amin, and may he reward everybody who's behind the scenes and everybody who's ever volunteered or worked or spent time or money um, on hugs. And, and may Allah also aid all the families who hug support and may he tear down the apparatus of a violent state and the violence across the world, Amin.